Welcome back to this video lecture series on programming questions for placement preparation. So the question today we will be have a look at is called find number of islands present in an undirected graph. So this is basically a graph related question. Let's have a look at the problem statement first. So it says given an undirected graph we need to find the number of islands in it. Now what is an island? Basically islands mean connected components in a graph connected components so how do we define that so suppose this is a graph given here okay this is the uh, adjacency matrix of the graph given and you can see that uh, it's basically a 2d array and in some places you can see uh, it, it holds a value of 1 in other places it holds values of 0 so all those ones which are connected to each other those number of ones form an island and here in this graph uh, you can see number of islands is equal to 4 that is number of connected components is equal to 4 uh, I'll show you here see this one this one this one and this one these all ones are connected to each other this is connected to this one this one is connected to this and this one is connected to this otherwise you see uh, any of them are not connected with any of the ones like any uh, and any one of these four ones do not have any more one as their neighbor so this is one connected component or this is one island another island here this one this one and this one connected okay so two and two more this one which is an isolated island like it does not have any neighbor and only one single one constitutes an island and here another single one that constitutes an island so total one two three and four four islands so in this problem we will be uh, given uh, an undirected graph we'll have to find these number of islands so let's have a look at the approach we're going to take so what we are going to do we are going to make an array of keeping track of visited nodes so all of the nodes that we are visiting so all of those nodes for surely will be having one value now uh, initialization will be uh, 0 for the visited array visited again this is going to be a 2d array now uh, what we are going to do we are going to traverse the graph in dfs manner by checking the condition if the current node holds a value 1 and if it is not visited currently and after after every uh, successful dfs traversal we increase the counter value by 1 and lastly we return the count value which will print the number of islands so uh, let's jump on to the programming part and let's see how we can implement this approach so I have opened my ID and I have already taken a graph here the one I explained in the example and I have taken these uh, two constraints that the maximum number of uh, row and column will be 5 so here uh, after this I'm going to print down a message that says number of islands and here I'm going to uh, you know use a function count of islands and I'll pass this graph right so uh, this function here count of islands will return me an integer value and we will print that so let me just define this function here int will be the return type and here this is uh, 2d array so I'll have to you know specify at least one dimension so let me just uh, write it like this okay so here uh, the first thing that I'm going to do I'm going to take an array I'm going to create a visited array okay so it will have a type of integer and I'll name it visited and the dimensions for this 2d array will be equal to this okay so now uh, we will be setting all the values of this 2d array visited to 0 uh, one way to do this is uh, using memset function already defined in uh, C++ inside the function the arguments will be the 2d array uh, the value that we are going to set uh, for all the fields that is 0 and the size of the 2d array so we'll use size of operator and here I'll specify the visited so now this is done I'll take a 
count island array uh, sorry uh, variable and I'll initialize it with 0 now uh, simple for loop so int i is equals to 0 this is for row so i less than row and i plus plus now another loop will be there so for this inner loop I'll take int j equals to 0 j less than call j plus plus so we are going to traverse this dfs a dfs traversal will be done uh, by checking a condition that is if graph of ij that is the value of graph of ij is 1 and it is not visited so not visited i j if this is the case then what we will do we will do a dfs traversal so i'll use a function here i'll define it uh, and the uh, parameters to this function will be the graph the adjacency matrix actually the current row the current column and the visited array and after this we will increase the count by one sorry this is count island right and lastly uh, we will return this count of rather count islands right okay so now uh, I'm going to define this DFS function here so let me just copy this signature from this line and above here so this is uh, going to have a void return type and in here the arguments will be integer again a 2d graph so i'll have to specify uh, at least one dimension so i'll do this with call the next is actually the row so i'll write it row another one is column and this is the visited array another 2d array so same thing okay so for this uh, dfs traversal uh, what we are going to do is we are going to take uh, all the cases uh, there will be eight cases that we, we will be checking for a particular node all of its eight neighbors that whether any of those neighbors consist a one i'll explain it uh, right now so let me go back to the slides once again so basically uh, for any of the nodes uh, in this graph in this adjacency matrix representation a node can have at max eight neighbors so how uh, i'll show it let's take this one as example this one has neighbors here 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 so three four five and three eight eight neighbors now what we are going to do that how to invoke these neighbors we're going to use some indices so we will assume that this particular node current node is at zero zero index so the neighbors will have indices like this will be at uh, in the previous column but the same row so this will be 0 minus 1 this will be 0 1 same way this in the previous column and the uh, you know row lower to this uh, particular node so this will be minus 1 minus 1 this will be minus 1 0 and this will be minus 1 1 same way for these three the indices will be 1 minus 1 1 0 and 1 1 so 8 indices are uh, you know perfectly definable so we we will be you know taking two arrays at that point and we will be using these indices so let's jump again uh, back to the programming part so i'm going to take two arrays for it and the type will be static so i'll be naming it neighbor row because uh, you see row and column two neighbors uh, will be here like for a particular neighbor it will have a row and a column so static int neighbor call right so the indices will be the first one as we said minus one and minus one then 
will be having minus 1 and 0 then minus 1 1 then 0 minus 1 0 1 1 minus 1 1 0 lastly 1 1 these 8 combinations is possible so now I'm going to run a loop uh, which will run for 8 times so it will check all the 8 neighbors so k less than 8 k plus plus so I'm going to first check if the neighbor is safe uh, so that I can actually move forward the DFS traversal uh, so I will again define this ESF function and the arguments will be the graph itself now here uh, the row will be row plus so I'm defining the row of the neighbor so row plus neighbor row of k this is an array so through this loop we will get to invoke all these indices okay in the in this pair manner minus one minus one minus one zero like this so the next will be call plus neighbor call of k and lastly we will pass this visited right so if this is the case that if it returns a true value like that then we are going to use a recursion and the arguments or the parameters to this function will be same as this so let me just copy it and paste it here right so this is the uh, DFS function definition now uh, the last thing that I'll do is I'll define this is a function so it will return a value so bool will be the uh, you know, boolean return type because it will return either true or false so now the name is I'll just actually uh, not I'll rather do it myself so is safe and the arguments are the graph again a 2d array so I'll have to specify at least a one dimension then the row then the column and lastly the visited so here it is so we'll return simply if I will check for certain conditions if all of those conditions are true only then it will return true so those conditions are if the row is greater than is equal to 0 and if the row is less than the maximum value we have then again and the call value is greater than is equal to 0 and the call value is less than equal to call right and we'll also check if the value of the current uh, you know node that is having a dimension graph row and call this is having a value of 1 and it is not yet visited so not visited row and call so this if the condition is true then we will have a return value of true from this function and then the further DFS will be made so uh, I guess the function definition and the program is complete so let's now run this program okay so there is one error here actually so I'll have to you know ha declare it as an array otherwise it will take it as an variable it says and one more thing before running that here in this DFS function I actually have missed one line uh, to type actually uh, the thing is that whenever we are entering this DFS function we have to specify that this uh, node with this particular row and column is visited so I have to make it uh, visited so visited of current row 
and current column will be value 1 now okay otherwise uh, we'll have another error so let's now run this program okay so you see uh, I use the graph that I used uh, in the example in the slides and I told you that we will be having four islands here and the output is here number of islands is four so this was uh, the example program of how we could actually implement an approach that will count the islands in an undirected graph rather the number of connected components so thank you for watching this video and staying with us see you next time